for some reason I missed out escape velocity and distance of closest approach of my field video. So here we go. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that now because you need to know a little bit about that before you think about these things. Let's go for escape velocity first. So if you have the earth and you have say a cannon, it's going to fire a cannonball upwards. Now if you fire a cannonball upwards, you know that eventually it'll come back down. But what if you could fire the cannonball fast enough that it could escape the Earth's gravitational field and it will never come back? And that's what escape velocity is all about. It is the minimum speed. Technically it is a speed, so it doesn't really matter in which direction. An object must have in order to escape a body's, that just means, you know, like a planet or whatever, gravitational field. And we know that a gravitational field or a radial gravitational field, like what is produced by a planet, falls away according to the inverse square law because of Newton's law of gravitation. We have the R squared. Technically, it's never ever going to escape the field in reality. But what we do say, similar to when we're thinking about potential, is that we end up with basically no field when we get to infinity. So going back to potential, what do we know? We know that potential is zero at that point because that's just the way it has to be in order for us to do any physics. So therefore we can say that at the surface here, we're firing up this cannonball and to begin with it has Ke, but at infinity, all it has is GP, it just has that potential energy. So we can say that all Ke gets turned into GPE. And so at infinity, in theory, this object, if you fire it at the escape velocity, should go to infinity and then just stop. And it shouldn't come back. If you give it a speed less than escape velocity, then obviously it will come back to the Earth eventually. Might take a while, but it'll come back. Give it a speed greater than the escape velocity and it will get to infinity and just keep on going. It will have more energy than it needs to overcome the gravitational pull. So we're talking about just at that point in between. So we can say that half mv squared, so it's all about energy. As soon as you see escape velocity, you know it has to be about energy. So half mv squared, all of that kinetic energy is being turned into GPE, and we know that that is given by GMM over R. One of the m's cancels either side. So that's why we say the minimum speed an object must have, not per kilogram or something like that. And finally, if we rearrange this, we find that the escape velocity is given by square root of 2 g m over r, where r is the radius of the planet, because of course, we're talking about the speed an object needs to be fired at from the surface of a planet. So that's 99.9% .9 of the time, the radius of the planet. m is the mass of the planet as well. So we can find out, just sticking numbers in, what the escape velocity is for any object on the Earth. There's a couple of things that we need to talk about. Let's think about, say, a rocket carrying a satellite and it's taking the satellite up to orbit. Doesn't need to reach escape velocity for two reasons. A, only going to orbit, not escaping field. And B, of course, escape velocity is the speed that something needs to be smacked at or fired up with and there's no other forces involved, there's no thrust or anything. Of course, with a rocket, it's accelerating as it ascends. And so that means that the higher it gets, of course, the less speed that it needs to get higher, as it were, because the field is weaker the higher it goes. One more thing, let's go back to our half mv squared equals gmm over r here. What we have on the right here is gm over r. What is that? That is actually potential. So we can rewrite this as half v squared, that's speed squared, don't get confused with your v's, equals potential. Therefore, escape velocity can also be given by the square root of two lots of the potential at the surface of a planet. If you don't have the mass of the planet, or you don't have the radius of the planet, but you have been given the potential, fret not, it's even easier to find the escape velocity from that. Okay, distance of closest approach. This isn't for planets and gravitational fields. This is for charges and electric fields, specifically light charges. So positive and positive, negative and negative. Prime example of this, of course, is Rutherford's alpha scattering experiment where he fired alpha particles that are positively charged at atoms. And we know that 
inside of the atom we have the nucleus okay the the electrons around here or whatever but we're talking about these alpha particles are positively charged being fired in they're never going to touch each other as it were now we have a bit of a problem because what does it mean at this scale when things touch well it doesn't really mean anything so you know the best we can do in that kind of situation if we're being asked to talk about things touching is talking about is the distance between the centers the same as their radii added up but whatever we'll leave that for now point is is that it's not really going to get close because of electrostatic repulsion and if this alpha particle was going on a straight line towards this nucleus then it should come right back as it gets repelled from the nucleus there's an alpha particle that was slightly lower here it's going to go like this of course it's not going to get repelled along the same line because well it's coming at an angle so it's going to get deflected something like that isn't it and then maybe one down here as well even less so it's going to deflect it over there which one of these alpha particles is going to get closest to the nucleus? Of course, it's the top one, the one that is going bang on, the one whose velocity is going straight towards the center of the nucleus. So this one is the one that gets to within distance of closest approach. And the reason we think about escape velocity and distance of closest approach at the same time is because they're very similar concepts. We're not going to infinity, but the same thing applies. What kind of energy does the alpha particle have here? It's kinetic energy. What kind of energy does it have when it's just closest to the nucleus? It has potential energy. Like when you throw a ball up in the air, we know that the velocity at the apex is zero just for a split second. And so therefore we know that there's no kinetic energy there at the top same thing here so once again we can say all of that k is being turned into potential energy obviously electrical potential energy let's go with blue so therefore i can say half mv squared once again is equal to k q q over r can't be gmm over r this time but we have an equivalent formula for electric fields of course there's no cancelling out here this time we're looking for r generally that's the way that it works so if we swap r with half mv squared, we end up with 2kqq over mv squared, where r is the distance between, as per usual, the centers of the charges that we're looking at. So there we go. That's escape velocity and distance of closest approach. If you have any questions, then put them in the comment down below, and I'll see you next time.